talk about human rights and decolonization in the abstract. But then when students want to put those theories into practice and we want to express and condemn the violence we talk about in our textbooks, it becomes an issue. And so I do know, like I'm not naive to the situation that we have here in the US. You know, our government funds Israel, we fund the military occupation, we fund their missiles. But I thought that as a student, because we are encouraged to have this discourse and to talk about these issues, I didn't foresee me sending a message to the law school community where we have human rights fellowships to become such national news. Rena Workman released a statement saying in part, Israel bears full responsibility for this tremendous loss of life. Expressing, quote, unwavering and absolute solidarity with Palestinians and their resistance against oppression toward liberation and self-determination, unquote. My note was supposed to be for law students to talk about the issues with law students. I wanted to reflect on my own opinions and also offer some context to the narrative that I saw building around the events of October 7th. I think that as a black person who has seen the violence um, from police officers against people in my community, it deeply concerns me that there is such a tangible link between the violence we're seeing in Palestine and the violence I see in the U.S. I think a lot about how the police in America work very closely with the Israeli occupation forces. We're seeing in Atlanta this program called Gili, which is an exchange program for police officers to learn and train with the IOF and then bring those same tactics back here. And then I also think as a black person, I think really deeply about resistance and what exactly that looks like. And, you know, we talk about by any means necessary or until we're free. I would not be here if not for the resistance of my ancestors. And we're also organizing around a free Palestine um, so that Palestinians have the right to return and freedom in their land. We are seeing people get more educated and want to do something about this issue. And so it's really important that we keep that energy up so that even if there is a ceasefire, we do see a free Palestine within our lifetime. Um, but then there's also this other fight that we're fighting against the breaches of our First Amendment rights and the suppression of voices, both from students and just from you know other community members. And it's interesting because it's not just our voices, right? We're being told that we can't protest. We're seeing incredible police presence at these civic actions. Something we really need to look at seriously is how comfortable the state is getting in being in the surveillance and this um, repression. <laughs> I think there's the very public suppression we're seeing, for example, at Columbia University, where they've suspended the Students for Justice in Palestine group and the group Jewish Voices for Peace. We're seeing things like people losing their jobs, like me, um, and not being offered any support by the academic institutions they go to. I think we're also seeing a more silent suppression from administrations who are telling groups quietly not to host that event or not to have that guest speaker or taking down posters or flyers advertising teachings. So I think as we're seeing this suppression, students are just is getting more organized and more energized and will continue to speak up for Palestinians because we know that we're in the right here. And the silence from our administrators, the repression from our administrators is wrong. At the end of the day, if they can do these 
atrocities across the world, there is nothing stopping them from doing those same atrocities here. And so it is our duty to speak up for people everywhere around the world facing these colonial powers, this oppression, because that is how we save ourselves. I think someone said that, you know, we are not freeing Palestine. Palestine is freeing us. And I think that is like so important because that's really how I see the situation and my own solidarity.